I'm Billy Fidlin, Director of Outreach and Justice for the Desert Southwest Conference, and welcome to the Legislation Writing Workshop. Your hosts for this workshop are Reverend Beth Rambaker, our Director of Connectional Ministries, Reverend Dr. George Cushman, Reverend Jen Lambert, and Trinity Donovan. Historically, the Conference Board of Church and Society and the related groups, such as Earth Care, Welcome and Reconciling, Economic Inequality, have composed and submitted documentation for change. Now this change can occur for either the annual conference or general church levels. They bring the documentation to annual conference for a vote and then further submission. Petitions and resolutions are created with the intent to produce change at either the annual conference or general church levels. These proposals are justice oriented in their nature for the betterment of the common good. While church and society generally has written these petitions or resolutions, certainly all are welcome to write. And that is what this workshop has been designed for. And so with that, we welcome you and let's get started. My name is George Cushman. I'm pastor at Dove of the Desert United Methodist Church and um, I've been asked to share today because uh, I've written a number of legislations or re resolutions for annual conference. When we hear about Wesley's understanding of grace and provenient grace, that spark of the divine that's within each and every one of us seeking to uh, emerge, I believe those are some of the hopes and dreams that God has for each and every person. It's troubling or it hurts to see that there are, are systems or attitudes and behaviors that would seek to diminish that gift or close those doors to realizing those hopes and those dreams. I think part of what uh, I recognize is a statement that my ethics professor uh, used to re make on a regular basis. He, he would say, you can't legislate morality, but you can legislate justice. And so it's that hope that in writing resolutions or designing some kinds of legislation that we can maybe break down some of those barriers or walls that prevent people from living from the fullness of the, the gift of life that they've received. What I've discovered is, is that as I, as I write and I reflect about uh, and, and talk with people who are maybe experiencing some of those um, roadblocks, that um, Jesus' statement of be compassionate as God is compassionate has uh, become very true for me in um, writing, writing the resolutions. It's being able to enter into another person's life and, and try to experience it or try to at least get a, a glimpse or an understanding of, of what it's like uh, for them to, to live in that way that maybe life is not as fully open for them. Hopefully it's helped me to not only broaden my understanding of what it means to be uh, someone who is caring and supportive, but maybe even what it means to be someone who loves as Jesus loves and to bring that sense of care and concern um, to the life of another. I, I'm not sure that I, that I really plan on in, um, bringing a major uh, change in, into the, the life or uh, the community per se as much as I hope that it's a way of introducing a topic and beginning some dialogue, uh, especially at the conference level. As I'm, I'm writing the, the resolutions, I'm hoping also to tell a story. For example, this last annual conference, the goal of our group that wrote five or six different resolutions um, was to tell the story of how we got to the place that we even needed to d be discussing the uh, traditional plan and, and um, but how we were responding to it and telling the whole story about how it came to be and then each resolution would build in, into that process of the story. Writing legislation, writing resolutions is a way for us to um, be open and, and affirming of those who maybe are, are feeling a little bit pushed to the side 
or not feeling that sense of acceptance and embrace by the church. It's a chance to look at issues more fully and deeply. It's a chance to help educate people about the topics. And it's a chance for us to um, dialogue together and see a, a way forward. If the resolutions can open doorways that give people permission to try something or do something, then it's been a success. I truly, truly see that it's a way of expressing God's hopes and dreams for all of us. One of the things that I used to do as the chair of um, the Board of Church and Society was to ask people to write petition papers as they presented resolutions to make sure that they looked at the issue as fully as they could from any and all different angles and begin to address what those topics, you know, our issues might be and how we would have answers if people, ra if people raise questions from the floor. We always make sure that we start with the scripture as a whereas that it, this isn't just something that we've, you know, that, that we've got a, a, a good scripture and in, the, and in the position paper that we write to support all this, that there's a, some good understanding of this scripture. It's, you know, historical or literal context in a way that gives the rest of this interpretation the legitimacy that it needs. It is based in um, a scriptural foundation and that's always key to a resolution or a legislation that there'd be some kind of a, a um, biblical or scriptural basis um, or, or a Wesley quote <laughs> at least you know, so, to, to um, begin that conversation. Resolutions are aspirational. We don't write something that's um, you have to do this or um, that it, it sets a, a we encourage, we strive toward, we desire to, kind of setting an ideal or a goal for us. I actually like it when people bring questions or maybe start to um, challenge some of what's been written, if it's indeed about the dialogue. It does get a little tedious when people want to change one word to the next or, or those kinds of things. And I know that we take a lot of time doing that, um, which is unfortunate because there's so many other things that we could be discussing. What I've discovered is, is that um, when I'm getting ready to bring a resolution that um, t issues aren't quite as simple as I used to once think they were. Um, they're, most are more complex. Hi, my name's Trinity Donovan, and I'm the Legislative Coordinator for our Desert Southwest Conference. And each year at annual conference and at our special session, I track the legislation as it's moving forward. The amendments that we have and making sure that we're, we're voting on the correct piece of legislation as it stands. I remember one in particular where we had five different friendly amendments. And so as the friendly amendments came up, I went to the amendment maker, and made sure that we had the correct language that they wanted to have. In that instance, one of the friendly amendments was something that the original legislation maker was not comfortable with. They talked and the amendment maker had the opportunity to bring it forward as an official amendment instead of a friendly amendment. They talked more and they were able to agree on some language that they were both comfortable with. A friendly amendment, as I'm talking about those, is ones where the original maker of a piece of legislation is comfortable with that amendment. In that case, it wraps up into the original legislation and is changed. A formal amendment is one that comes to the floor where the person who made the legislation is not in agreement with that. And so through our body, we have the ability to have discussion on the amendment itself and then see if that passes or not. If it passes, that becomes the new legislation we're working on. If it does not pass, we revert back to the original legislation. So as all those pieces are moving, um, I'm keeping track of that. I'm making sure that the amendments are what you're anticipating making. Um, it's the correct language. If you have any questions during special session or before about uh, legislation you'd like to, to bring to the floor or some amendments you might want to make on those, feel free to reach out to me. My email is trinityd at gmail.com. Uh, thanks so much, and I look forward to seeing you at our special session in September. My name is Beth Rambicure, and I serve as your Director of Connectional Ministries for the Desert Southwest Conference of the United Methodist Church.
One way your church gets to vote is by sending lay members to annual conference. Each year at church or charge conference, our churches vote on who they will send to annual conference. This is the lay member to annual conference, who then votes on legislation at annual conference, elects delegates to general conference, and reports back to the local church, along with the pastor, all the exciting things that happened at annual conference. Another way the local church has a say is that its members and groups can petition the general conference to change both the Book of Discipline of the United Methodist Church and the Book of Resolutions of the United Methodist Church. Petitioning the general conference is the only way to change the Book of Discipline and shape our Book of Resolutions. The general conference as a collection of delegates from across the United Methodist Connection is the only body that speaks on behalf of the United Methodist Church. The only gathered body in the denomination where every single local church has a voice and a vote is annual conference, which is one of the reasons the annual conference is considered the basic body of the United Methodist Church. And this is why it is so critical for each and every one of our churches to participate in annual conference. If you are a clergy member of the annual conference or a lay member of the United Methodist Church or part of an organization within the United Methodist Church, you may petition the general conference. Here are some mechanics. When submitting a petition to change or add a resolution, you may only address one issue at a time. For example, you may want to tackle both poverty and hunger, and maybe also income inequality, seeing how all of these issues are related to each other. But when you submit a petition for a resolution, each issue must be addressed separately by different resolutions. When submitting a petition to change or add to the Book of Discipline, a petition may only address one paragraph, unless each paragraph is so closely related to the other that a change in one word would require a change in the others. In this case, the petition can call for an amendment to the language in each additional paragraph. There are specific directions on submissions. Submissions that do not comply with the format, deadline, and rules will be deemed invalid. To learn more about submitting legislation to General Conference or to submit a piece of legislation to General Conference, we invite you to visit dscumc.org. Click on the 2020 General Conference button. There you will find up-to-date resources and links to all things related to the 2020 General Conference of the United Methodist Church. If you need help crafting legislation or a set of eyes to look over something, our Connectional Ministries Office, in collaboration with our Communications Department, Outreach and Justice Department, and our Conference Secretary, Pastor Jen Lambert, are ready to assist you. Remember, the deadline to submit legislation to the General Conference 2020 is September 18th.